This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. It's, it's all a tremendous synergy and assimilation of so many ideas. You know, today we did have a show on the Amazon Go thing this morning. We also had a show um, on, on, on China. And uh, it, it goes to the Richard Hornick speech that I was telling you about, Russell. Um, it goes to mind control in China. So if you take them all together and you synergize everything that happened on those two shows, you get this show with Russell Yu, because we, we will be able to make sense out of both sides of that. Uh, Russell Yu, a, a, um, a lawyer, a Honolulu lawyer, practicing in Beijing and teaching in Beijing, uh, and uh, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. Full time 15 years, yeah, Jake. It's amazing. Uh, and, and we're going to call this, uh, what are we going to call this? Um, artificial intelligence. Uh, the race is on between the US and China. Actually, you know, you don't need to see artificial intelligence. You could just say the race is on between the U.S. and China in every way. That's the way it is. Tagline, who's winning the race for artificial intelligence? Very interesting, very important. And it's a kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a look through the keyhole about what's really happening here. We need to have these discussions to compare what's happening there. You're a great window for that, Russell. What's happening here, what's happening in Europe and elsewhere. Welcome back to your show, Russell Liu. Thank you, Jay. It's, it's wonderful to be back here in Honolulu where it's nice and warm. The air is clean, but you know, this year Beijing has actually been very clean. The, the government controls this is good. on pollution. It, well, it that's, that's because the, the Politburo can do things. You know, in the U.S., we, we can't even, uh, you know, um, we, we, we can't even keep the government going. It shuts down every now and then, and everybody fusses and fumes about um, opening it up and starting it up again. They don't have that problem in Beijing, I don't think. Well, I think from the Chinese perspective, they're just bewildered. They headlines in China now is, you know, uh, this is the greatest uh, form of government that we've looked at, admire of the years, and to see it has these issues where it, things are being shut down. Uh, you know, again, uh, it's a time of change for everyone in China and the U.S., and so our topic today uh, really hits on something that I think is a, a real game changer in our society, whether it's China or the U.S., the use of artificial intelligence, you know, with the uh, Amazon's opening of the Amazon Go store in Seattle. So we think we're ahead of China, but are we really ahead? Well, the big question, and you know, I mean, you're going to know the answer better than anybody I've talked to, is um, so do they have a, an Amazon Go store or this, a li the like of an Amazon Go store in China now? Well, I think they've already opened their stores uh, last year in Shanghai. Um, uh, uh, the Alibaba. It's not Amazon, though. It's somebody no, it's, else. It's Alibaba. It's Alibaba. The, Jack the big, Ma. Jack Ma, Alibaba. And they have it Cafe Tao or Tao Cafe. And basically, it's it's a kind of a convenience store it's like Amazon Go. Um, and it uses the technology that China's been using for many years, the last five years, you know. What technology is that, Russell? For example, I was reading about Amazon. I've been seen, I haven't gone to the Amazon Go store, but you're taking the playbook out of China. You have to scan the QR code when you enter. Same thing in China, you have the QR codes, Alipay. Okay. Uh, and it's, There's you a, scan the it. First similarity right th there. Th we're learning from China and to enter. Uh, so it, it pulls up your profile through the big computers. Yeah. Uh, and to the use of artificial intelligence through uh, face recognition, through um, sensors. Yeah. All of this well, happened well, in China. Let's stop there. So if, you know, one of the issues around this is how can I gain, game the system? You know, and everybody's trying to figure out how to game the Amazon system, and I suppose that that issue has come up in China too because it's similar, similar systems. So if I walk in and I put the QR code down on the, the reader, so to speak, I could have somebody else's QR code. I could have a phony QR I could have had, I could have a stolen identity QR code, and I'm even charging all my things to someone else, which is not what we want. That's not acceptable. So you talk about artificial intelligence. How do we use artificial intelligence to verify my QR code that it's really me? Well, I think a lot of technology today, you have face, facial recognition through sensors. You know, uh, you know that, that's not new. We, we see through the, the iPhones, with that technology is there, through Microsoft, uh, they have it for their Windows system. Uh, it'll recognize you, uh, you can't log in. So I'm sure that the Q code's tied into a facial recognition feature. Now, uh, 
Also, so you put the, the, the thing down mm -hmm. with the QR code. <clears throat> In the Amazon store, there's 200 camera, cameras watching you, 200, right? And they're all good cameras. And the, the, they are taking a picture of your face, and they're comparing it with your profile somewhere, which has a picture or maybe many pictures of your face, and trying to verify against what these cameras are seeing in your face. And if they find that you are the person in the profile, they let you in. Is that what happens? Well, I'm not sure how Amazon does. Those are secrets that we all don't know they yet. They are indeed quite secrets. secrets. But well, there, so, there's so there's mention the stores, of it that there, there are. The Alibaba stores are also secret, aren't they? They're all, they're all secret. But, yeah. but I think getting back to it, I, I think what happens through the process, through, through Alibaba, Alipay, WeChat, uh, and WeChat Pay, um, you know, you're tied into the national ID or your passport if you're a foreigner. So your, your face is there. Your, 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 everything's in there. Um, so uh, uh, there is a sense that you are the person that are, can, can actually use this. Um, uh, so again, that's an issue that I'm sure uh, Alibaba, Alipay, and, and Amazon has thought about, you know, how do we sure. prevent uh, potential... <clears throat> they would be ripped off. Uh, you know, not only because um, they'll be ripped off in this store, which sells convenience store kinds of things. But the next generation of these stores are going to be selling much more expensive things. And so they had to use these stores as a laboratory to make sure that in the next generation of stores, they, they have 100% uh, you know, reliability. Mm -hmm. So after your face is verified uh, against the Q code, QR code and all that, what happens in your experience in the Alibaba store? Well, I haven't, I haven't actually visited the Alibaba store in Shanghai, but from my understanding, what happens is that there are sensors that uh, deal with movement. If you take things off the shelf, it will sense that, and it's tracked to your Q code. Okay. Uh, and when you leave, uh, it will um, sense that you're leaving, and what you've taken off, it's already in the system uh, where it knows what you're buying. How does it know? Well, it knows it because you took it off the shelf. Uh, okay. That's the Amazon also. So Amazon has sensors. It took a picture of you taking it off the shelf. Well, I think there's there are sensors that uh, that have to do with the actual item that's being taken off the shelf, and and what kind of know. sensors? Well, these are sensors through cat, whether it's cameras. I've seen I've seen the Alibaba, uh, their uh, their uh, information about it, where they actually have cameras and they have sensors that watch you, uh, and they can tell uh, well, if you're taking something. Let me off. try to make a construct on that. So there's some kind of signature on the on the package. And they're taking a picture of you, the shelf, and the package, maybe multiple pictures. And they're using artificial intelligence mm -hmm. to make some conclusions about it's you, it's your account, because you did sign in, and it knows what you look like. It knows what's on the shelf because it has a map of everything in the store and exactly where that thing is on the shelf. It knows where you're standing because, you know, it's smart enough to know that this angle of the camera with that background uh, can be mapped to a specific location um, at a specific shelf on the store. And then when you touch something, it's looking, it's looking over your shoulder and it's seeing that thing move uh, and it's seeing the code, the signature of that thing that's just readable by the camera uh, in your hands. And then it's, it's like a person. It's like a person watching you take something off the <coughs> shelf. That's what it's like. That's artificial intelligence. That's artificial yeah. intelligence. Yeah. And while it's doing all of this, computing distance, weight, so forth, uh, it basically runs a series of algorithms. It's a mathematical computation. Yeah. And so in the end, it, the end it, it knows who you are, it knows what you're taking, and it knows what you're walking out of the store, so you get charged with it. And it, I believe that Amazon Go is a similar concept. Yeah, I, I, it does, uh, and I, it can't be identical, but it's going to be similar. One thing about Amazon that was in the paper this morning in The Guardian was that um, one guy tried, with the permission of the store, to put a blanket or some kind of cover um, on the item he was putting in his shopping bag uh, to see if he could game the system, fool the system, and the system charged him for it, even though the system could not see any particular codes on the package he was removing because he had covered it. So this AI is smart enough to get around that kind mm -hmm. of gaming. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a whole change in the way business is going to be done. Um, and you know, around the US, uh, Walmart has been testing the artificial intelligence technology, although it has not come out with something yet. 
uh, and Macy's has Macy's on call using artificial intelligence also to actually to make it a, a, a much more useful um, consumer experience, finding what you want to the store, it, finding out whether something is a stock, <coughs> and all without the human element, all without having a person there. So aside from reading articles, you know, press releases and the like that, you know, that a given uh, company will agree to release, will want to release in order to show how good it is. Aside from that, do you think there's any collaboration between Jack Ma and Alibaba and, um, and Amazon? Or, or are they in their separate corners? I, I think they're pretty much in their separate corners. Uh, there might be some overlap in, 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 in cooperation, but uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's very different because in China, uh, the um, market is, I think, much more developed, much more advanced. Uh, and there's, there's really s several reasons why China's ahead. I think that China's ahead. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it goes with everything from the government to the consumer to the size of the market. Uh, and, and you know uh, why China is, is such a, a market that is much more hit is because people are, have, are accepting technology much more readily. Even old people have smartphones. They're excited about China. technology. It's not exciting. They've seen how powerful it is They've seen it and they have to use it because it used to be a society that you'd carry cash. Uh, and when you carry cash, you know, you've got only so much cash and that's it. You have to go yeah. to the bank. Yeah. And the next step in the evolution in the U.S. was, well, we write checks. We do charge cards. And the Chinese have jumped over that because of technology. Sure. They don't need charge cards. It's still a cash society, but we don't use cash, but we use our smartphones. We use WeChat Pay, for example. We can direct payments to somebody else. Is that like a, like a debit card? I mean, you have to have the money in the account, or will it draw down on your balance somewhere else when you exceed what you have on deposit in your yeah, account? I'm not sure if you used to really get a debit card, but you know, I, I don't know how to characterize it, Jay, but all I know is it's, you, you have to connect your WeChat account to the bank. You have to check, connect okay. your Alipay to the bank. So what it does is immediately takes it, it out of the bank. Takes out bank right there. It's it, it's simultaneous. There's Suppose no way you don't to, have the money in the bank. If you don't have money, then you, you can't buy anything. Stops you right it there. Stop. It, it blocks. It says no, it you can't stop, buy it will, The transaction will not go yeah, through. And yeah, so yeah. it's it's sort of like having cash in your in your your iPhone or your smartphone. And the good thing about it is that you can do many things with it, Jay. You can you can, for example, if I'm out for dinner with my American friends, and we go Dutch. And my bill is eight dollars and thirty-one cents. We calculate the other. My friend, it's twenty dollars and two cents. In the old days, we go out to eat. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have change. You know what? I'll get you guys later. And it, you never get paid. The Chinese are smart. With WeChat, we pay. All I do is you you plug in the amount exactly eight dollars and one cents. I send it to Jay Fidel to your account on WeChat, and that money comes over instantaneously. Bingo! It pops up. I like that. You know, this so this is good. You don't get. You don't get left behind that way. <laughs> the, the victim of your good, good, um, good graces. So, um, you know, a big question on this is, um, you know, when, when Jack Ma developed this uh, for Alibaba, you know, he has Alibaba, which is a kind of Chinese Amazon, but Jack Ma is buddy with the, with, with the government. I mean, as many people, many business people in China are, and he's got the full support of the Chinese government. And my question to you is, how much is the Chinese government involved in this initiative? Because whatever you, whatever you do, it costs plenty of money to develop this kind of technology. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, think that, I don't think Jack Ma is, is doing it with the government or, or, or the suggestion that the government, uh, there's a negative connotation is involved behind it. I don't think so. I think what happens is the, the, the government um, really becomes a business partner. And... Um, uh, the, for example, um, many startup companies, the, the, the national policy is innovation. The national policy now is switched to, um, by 2030, China says our goal is to become the artificial intelligence uh, king around the world. Um, it'll be very global. And so what, what they're doing is they're, 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 they're pushing that direction. So, uh, you know, uh, certain joint ventures, the, the money can be borrowed from the government, uh, I suspect. Uh, and you have a really a partner who is, sets out a national agenda. And I think there, there are many things that are good for the business world, 
because that's the, the direction China wants to take. Mm. For example, years ago they decided we're not going to be the garage floor manufacturers around the world. We want to switch to technology. So a lot of Chinese companies, industries went out of business. A lot of factories in Guangdong closed down. It was it was it was a time where uh, no longer, and you had to be in high tech. Innovate or and, die. Yes, exactly. That that's why Shenzhen became even more important because that's their Silicon Valley. Yeah. So what what you have is a tremendous amount of innovation now. And if I were in China, I'd be watching Amazon. And for that matter, if I was Amazon, I'd be watching in China. Um, and you know, all of this is on a bed of data, as you said, and the materials you gave me said. It's all on a bed of data. You can't do this without keeping a lot of data and analyzing a lot of data using artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. And, and I think it's fair to say that's happening in China. It has happened in China, where nobody's going to stand in the way of, of the government's uh, you know, data collection, personal data collection. And it must be, it must be happening or will happen in the Amazon case because um, you know, people, although they may not be so so mm, permissive about letting the government collect <coughs> data in the, in the U.S. as they are in China. I think people are getting into that. They're getting, may I say, lulled into it. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I, I have nothing to hide. I, I don't mind sharing my personal data with the government, so I let them do it. And in fact, there's a, a renewal of the Patriot uh, Act, which is happening right now, probably ex expanding the Patriot Act, as I recall. And so I think, you know, where at first, and say, in, if you looked at this issue in the United States before 2001, before 9-11, people would have balked at the idea of the government collecting data, you know, at, the, at, your, at your cell phone company, you know, the black box they put in your cell phone company and all these other, you know, dark collection of data, even without the old fashioned search warrants. Um, but now people are, you know, as in China, they're getting lulled into the idea that, well, it's okay. Um, you know, and it's happening. It's 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 part of the technological evolution of the world as we know it. So it's it's okay, and we're not going to say anything, and we're not going to complain. And this Amazon Go is probably going to encourage them to do that because they want in. They want into this kind of technology. It's okay. You can take my picture. You can you know process all my information and remember my profile and all that. But isn't it a little scary, Russell? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think whenever you have personal, if you're looking from the American perspective, I think of culture, uh, you're looking at uh, concerns that deal with individual liberties, you're looking at concerns as to privacy. Uh, and these are the issues that I think are more prevalent on the U.S. side. And the China side, you've got to re realize the culture, privacy really doesn't exist. Because growing up, you lived with your family, you lived with your grandparents, you lived in a small room. Um, nothing's private. In fact, the culture is so different, Jay, and I think that's where we're missing the point here. Because from the American point of view, we like to shut our doors and have privacy. We like our space. In China, if you shut your doors to the rest of the family, that, mean, that tells them you're doing you're something wrong. You're up to no good. You're up to no good. Because in China, it's simply just walk in, walk out. This is yeah. all part of yeah. the group. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's I want to make way, this thing plain, though, Russell. It, we're going we're gonna to take a break. And in a sense, conceptually, that is like shutting the door on our audience. And we're doing this with full knowledge of our audience. They may think we're hiding something, but we're not hiding anything. We're merely taking a break. Okay, watch this. Hey, aloha. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy and transportation. Energy and maritime, energy and aviation, we have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Okay, that's Russell Yu. He's a law professor in Beijing 
and a Hawaii lawyer to boot. And uh, he'd been talking about the things that he learns in his life in China. He'd been there 15 years and has a fairly good grasp of what's going on. And, uh, and, and comparing, comparing what goes on there with what goes on here. So, you know, Russell, I mean, how is this kind of technology, in your perception, going to affect um, the, the, the need for privacy or the cultural expectation of privacy, maybe in, in many ways historic in this country, um, going forward? What, what's going to happen, do you think? Well, I think, I think artificial intelligence, I think, uh, will it succeed or not in the U.S.? Um, from America's perspective, you know, we have a, a certain level of expectation of privacy. We don't want people to know about our personal information. We have individual liberty. In the Chinese world, the culture is so different, so the expectation of privacy, I think, is not as high as in an American world, mm -hmm. this culture. In China, it's a group culture. Um, it's a culture based on we had to overcome hardships in China. We didn't have the financial resources, so we have to pool our money. We have to pull ourselves together in a group to be stronger. And so, it, and it's a Confucian society. Yeah. So it was not so the individual. So you surrender notions of privacy. You surrender notions of privacy. For the benefit of the group. For the benefit of the group. Yeah. And it's okay, as long as we made progress. Yeah. So, I was different. talking about this uh, you know, speech by Richard Hornick at the China Seminar in the East-West Center last week, two weeks ago. And what, what strikes me, though, is that this is part of the same thing. It's part of the same thing, because what, what's happened, although a, a few years ago, there was more, more academic freedom, more personal freedom of speech. You could express yourself without too much fear of, of being penalized by the government. But now that's kind of changed in recent years under Xi Jinping. You remember Xi Jinping, he's the one that wants to be treated like Mao, that mm -hmm. Xi Jinping, who is written into the Constitution now as having the thought of Xi Jinping uh, compared to the thought of Mao's quite something. Deng, Xiao, Deng Xiaoping never got to that mm -hmm. level, uh, which you know, some people thought he should have. So I guess you know, there's a comparison then in the way tr people treat this new mind control kind of thing that Richard uh, Hornick is talking about, and uh, you know, the idea of surrendering your mm -hmm. privacy for the, for the community good. Uh, I wonder if you could comment on that. I, I think it happens everywhere, Jay. Look about who's the inventor of fake news. You know. Donald uh, J. Trump. Is our yes. Idea. So we, we have the same issues here, but maybe a different face. And I think that uh, in China, at least the perspective, I can't really comment because I'm not a Chinese citizen. Uh, I don't get uh, probably uh, more depth thoughts as they do. But I, I think one of the things, as I said back again, it, I don't think people, you know, it's, it's a culture thing. It's a, it's a group culture. And it, it's moving in directions that it could not have moved. Uh, the miracles, 800 million people lifted out of poverty. It is you miracle. have a high-speed train. Travel is such much more convenient. Uh, you don't need to carry cash. You carry your WeChat, your smartphone. Uh, you communicate through your smartphone. Uh, you have the most largest number of Internet users in China. And yet, you have a society where it is still a run by a single party. Again, there are trade-offs. So I think it depends on the eyes of, of the people, you know, their perspective. Because I think if we look through the eyes of a Westerner, and we talk about rule of law, we talk about constitution, I think, yes, that would be something that we as Americans cannot live in uh, or tolerate. And I think. It's a, it's, a different, it's a different set of ideals and thinkings. Yeah. Uh, you know, we come from a rule of law. You know, we have our own problems. We have guns. You know, have we gone so crazy with this individual liberty that the Second Amendment says we can take a gun and go out and do things? People do things with the yeah. guns out. You That's know. an incomplete conversation. And, and, and yeah. again, you, if you're talking what your, Rich Hornick is saying, well, let's take a look at the flip side. Let's go in China. You can walk at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. You never fear that you're going to get picked up and shot at. Yeah. You know, so again, there are prices so what's, for Yeah, there. that's worth something. So that's worth sure. something. I mean, imagine if, if you're living in New York, Jay, and you're from New York, Jay, I understand, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, if you walk in the street at night, you're in the wrong section of town, you're going to be worried. You're going to be worried staying out late at night because the possibility uh, or catching the subway. 
in China never happens. No, I remember when I was in China a couple of times ago, uh, we walked all the way across town one night, late at night, after a dinner. We walked all the way back to our hotel. It was a long way on dark streets. Nobody was afraid of anything. You know, again, so it was completely safe. Right, and again, so again, um, I'm not the expert to tell what's right and wrong, but again, we've got to realize that we've got to put our different blinders on. It's a different set of, set of sunglasses there and here. Well, I think I'd so. like to throw one thing in the pot, and that is that in China, people are pretty excited about China's success. You know, what's, the, what's that old cultural point about um, if, if the government is giving you a good economy, you respect the government, you back the government. If the government stops giving you a good economy, you have the right to upend the government. <clears throat> and um, that, it, you don't need to do that now because the, you know, the, the, it's obviously successful on a number of levels. And the price of success, of course, is, is um, you know, going along with the program. And what, what strikes me, <clears throat> what strikes me is that um, people are very, in China, am I right, are very excited about this success. Mm -hmm. It is beyond where they expected. It is, is glorious, is what it is. They have had hard times in, you know, memorable past, in, in, in memory, um, but now they are, they are absolutely happy. And because they are happy with the economy and the technology, they don't mind incursions on what might have been, you know, incursions before. Yeah, and I think the word incursion, I mean, that's because incursions, that from a Western point of view would call them incursions. Okay, forgive my Western in, in, approach. In, in the Chinese way, you know, it, it's, it's part of a cultural thing that, for example, uh, let's go back to, for example, the, the author that wrote uh, Tiger Mom. Yeah, I sure. think the American audience were appalled by it. Appalled by it. But, you know, if you ask the Chinese in America, as well as in China, does this happen? Yes, it does happen. And it's because this is what has propelled them to success. Yeah. And, and it's a culture. Yeah. And it was okay to be managed. You know, the whole idea in the Chinese world is that you are managed by your parents. That's how the kids come successful. You have to have the drive. That's why they don't commit crimes. Yes, they may be missing certain things in life that we have in America, but this is how they move their society to the next level. Uh, and, and that's how it has worked in culture. So when you talk about uh, government, it's sort of like it's a benevolent mom and dad. Sort of Singapore. Singapore was not a true democracy. That was a dictatorship. It was a benevolent dictatorship. Yeah. So in some sense, there is a cultural uh, thing that runs through all of this. And I think, again, you hear experts that talk about China, yes, from a U.S. point of view, I think I, I'd agree that it's not like what we have here and it can be objectionable. But in their world, again, you think about it. The priorities are different. The cultural uh, makeup is totally different, and they view it differently. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not for me to say. Takes me back to uh, the title of our program. Uh, we we fashioned this to say artificial intelligence. The race is on between the U.S. and China, and I my my comment on that is it's not only about artificial intelligence, it's about everything. <coughs> it's about success. It's about pushing the envelope on technology, on on the economy, on on diplomatic relations, for that matter. And the race is on, and frankly, that China's doing very well. And I guess the question I put to you, last question, is <clears throat> how important is it to the average Chinese citizen that China um, wins the race? I don't think there's a, a, a uh, win type of situation. I think we've come into a global world. And I think the more Chinese are coming out to travel to see the U.S., the more being educated, a million students every year leave China to get educated in the West. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's a, a zero-sum game. I think it allows them to have things that they would not have before. For example, uh, there are a lot of great products that are, there's technology, Jay. There's there a lot is. of great products <laughs> that are made for export to the U.S., but you can't buy it in China. Now, with artificial intelligence, now with e-commerce, you can buy these things and Amazon will ship it to China. And there are portals in which e-commerce has crossed borders. And think about it, American companies, small, medium size, that, does, that don't have the money to go and open in China, you just sell it through e-commerce, it crosses the border. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a world where we're becoming more, have a shared reality. And I think, I don't think 
the Chinese will view it as something like win or what, you know. But I think the reality is that they're looking at, and maybe they can't understand why when they come to the U.S., you have to have a charge card for this. Well, we don't use charge cards, you know. We use WeChat, you know. Uh, the reality is that we're getting crossed in two worlds because of technology. And artificial yeah. intelligence is, is, is the, the latest that I think uh, is going to be a good indicator where a society is at some point. Yeah, you know, in the past, uh, we used to think that China emulated our, our technology, our success, our education, our business process, and all that. And I saw something in, I forget where it was, in the last day or so, in one of my various newspapers, um, that suggests that, um, that the, the Chinese have gotten over the notion that they need to emulate us. Uh, the Chinese actually are out ahead on many of these things. And, and the question now is whether we understand that we should be learning from them. That, that's a great point. I saw that also, Jay. And I think that these, the old world of copycat is gone. The Chinese are not copycat. They have their own innovation. And the thing about it is that they're using it in a huge market of uh, internet users in their world. So they test out these latest technologies. We don't do it here. Uh, and it, it, it seems to me that, again, they are much more in innovation. Um, I see the smartphone as a, as a real essential key, a piece mm. in this whole digital revolution. Mm. And the Chinese are making applications for it. But we're behind, we're not gonna have mm. applications for it. We're tied in with contracts with, with f mobile companies that they wanna collect us from, from so much amount of money every year, and we don't see innovation in them, you see? Yeah. And, and, and we have a society that the, the banks are, are, you know, are not like the Chinese banks, you know, although the Chinese banks in, in China are, are run by the government, owned by the government, but they don't facilitate that e-commerce like in China. The banks yeah. are tied into WeChat, Alipay. So I don't have to go to bank. I don't have to go to an ATM machine. You know, uh, I just use my WeChat. So where you might read that Amazon, uh, Amazon Go in Seattle is a great statement of the boundaries of artificial intelligence and that uh, if there is a, uh, a store-like store in China, they must have, must have copied it from Amazon. Uh, my revelation here is that that isn't so. Mm -hmm. That in fact, uh, the Chinese store opened some months ago, uh, in 2017 anyway, and that if anybody had the opportunity to look across the pond and see and learn from the other guy, it was Amazon learning from the Chinese. Let's get that straight. Yes, and next time when I'm in China, I'll go to Shanghai, we're gonna do an actual tour one of these stores. Take pictures. And live videos, Jay. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. Aloha. Aloha. Xie Xie. Zai Jian. Zai Jian. Again soon. <laughs> <laughs>